Hello and welcome to tonight's strategy presentation titled Five Keys to Managing Your Income Trades. My name is Brian D'Amico and it is my pleasure to be your instructor for tonight's video. Let's start off with why is this so important? And when I say why is this important, I'm talking about why is managing your trades and knowing how to manage them very important to know. Well, it's because a lot of people get into trades and you don't know what to do. You basically don't know what to do when things go wrong or don't go as planned. You know, I always think about my neighbor a few years ago. She, she has a 22-year-old daughter. Well, she was 22 at the time. And she had gotten into a car accident. You know, just a minor car accident. Nobody was injured or anything. But she called her mom and she's like, Mom, Mom, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do. And the mom was shocked because her daughter didn't know what to do. She had no idea how to handle the situation. And a lot of people, when they get into trades and income trades and options trades, and when the trade starts to go against them, they just don't know what to do. And you might be in the same position. When a trade starts to go against you, you feel like a deer stuck in the headlights. You basically freeze sometimes and you don't do anything. You either watch any profits that you had start to melt away, or you watch small losses turn into bigger and bigger losses. Instead of doing it that way, you need to be prepared. You know, like a Boy Scout, you, you, you got to be prepared for whatever situation may occur. You need to have a plan in place whether a trade goes for you or against you. Now, before we get into how to manage an income trade, let's make sure we're all on the same page. And let's talk about what is an income trade to begin with. When we talk about an income trade, we're talking about a trade where you can make money even if you're wrong on direction. This video is not about all the ins and outs of the trade itself. It's about how to manage the trade. But I want to give you a quick rundown of the type of trade that we're talking about here. The trade we teach is called a credit spread. It's a low risk trade that's easy to do. In fact, a couple years ago, I taught my teenage daughter how to do it. And if she could do it, I'm sure you could do it. Like I said, it's a low risk trade, high probability of success, especially when you manage it correctly, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. But let me give you a quick rundown of what's involved with the trade. You're basically finding a really good stock. And let's say the stock is going up. And all you're saying is, I don't want the stock to get down here. So you're basically going to sell an option down here. And the thing that makes it low risk is you're going to be buying an option here. You do those two things at the same exact time. And by buying this option down here, you are protecting yourself. So the reason why we call this an income trade is the stock could go up and you make money because you collected money by doing this down here. And by the way, when you the reason why you're collecting money is because when you sell this option, you collect money and you only use part of that money to buy this one down here. All right, so it's a net credit to you. So if the stock goes up, that's good. You get to collect and keep the money. If the stock goes sideways, well, you still get to keep the money. Now, if the stock starts to go down, well, you can still keep some of the premium. Now, of course, if the stock continues to move down lower and lower and lower and lower, you're going to have to be managing this trade as it goes down and minimizing losses, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. But in this type of trade, you can make money if it goes up, if it goes sideways, and even partially if it starts to come down a little bit. And it's one of the reasons why we love this type of a trade. So tonight's video, we're going to be talking about how to manage these types of trades and things that you should be thinking about and doing when placing these income trades. So let's look at the five keys to managing your income trades. The first key is to not be greedy on these trades. You don't want to be chasing bigger and bigger gains because if you're not careful, all the gains that you once had could evaporate. You know, I always think about that game show Deal or No Deal. You know, that game where they pick a suitcase and they're offered certain amounts of money to sell that briefcase back. Now, you go on to that show and you don't have anything, right? You just have what you brought. Then all of a sudden, you're being offered hundreds of thousands of dollars for this briefcase and some people don't take it because greed kicks in and they're tempted by the bigger payout and a lot of times people walk away with virtually nothing or you know something much much lower than the previous offer that they had so on these income trades we're not going to be greedy there are two things to consider on these income trades number one is that anything can happen and number two we're going to be talking about the velocity of money 
let's first talk about how anything can happen. All right, a moment ago, I was talking about a certain type of trade called a credit spread. And when you're doing that trade, remember you have a stock that you think is going to continue to go higher, so you sell a spread down here. And that spread has an expiration date which is good for you because as it gets closer and closer to the, let's just put this line over here, this expiration date, it's good because you're collecting more and more of that premium. And what happens sometimes, and I know what happened to me one time years ago, is the stock was going in my favor and you know I'm up, I'm probably up 80% towards the maximum that I can make. Because remember, when you do a credit spread, you take in money and take in a credit, right? You take in a credit, and that's the most you can make. So as this trade was going on, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to that max, and I'm saying, all right, man, expiration date is just a few days away. If I just hold on to this expira till expiration, I can make the full amount. So greed started to kick in. Well, what happened? Some sort of, I don't remember exactly what it was. Some news event or maybe earnings or something came out, and then the stock gapped down. You know, it gapped way down, and all the profit was gone, which is why in these types of trades, we're not going to be greedy and try and get the full 100% of the profit. What we're going to do is we're going to try to get half, 50% and then move on. And on some other types of trades, we're going to go for 25%. So on these income trades, we're going to be going for 25 to 50% of the credit. For example, if you sell this spread, and let me erase some of this. If you sell this spread and you sell it and you receive $1,000, well, as soon as you receive $500 on the trade and you lock in that $500 profit, you're going to close the trade and move on. And this is another one of the beauties of this type of a trade is it helps you eliminate the greed because you've got a maximum amount that you can make and you know exactly how much you're going to take of that. So the first part of not being greedy is understanding that anything could happen. So since anything could happen, you're going to take the profits when you've got them at the predefined levels. The other part of not being greedy is we want to consider the velocity of money. I put together an example to show you. Now this is showing what's called a risk graph. And I understand risk graphs can sometimes be a little bit hard to understand if you've never seen one before. I know they were for me. So let me just break this down and just point out some of the main things that you're looking at here. This is a trade for Adobe that I just put together just to show as an example. And you'll notice it doesn't look like a stock graph. It's a, a profit and loss diagram of what could happen on this trade. And this is a bullish trade. And you can see the stock's price is running along the bottom. And if the stock goes up in price, that's good. And you can see that's where the green part is, which indicates profits. If the stock goes down, you see that's red over here. That indicates losses. So on these types of trades, it's better if the stock goes up. Well, when I set up this trade, you can see over here, you received $140 of credit. And that's just selling one contract. If you did 10 contracts, it'd be 1,400. But I just did one contract just to keep things simple. So you got $140, you're only risking $360, which is why I said this was a lower risk trade. But let's get back to talking about the velocity of money. If Adobe does what you expect and does what you want and it goes up in price, take a look at what happens here. What you see now is an illustration of what would happen if Adobe went from 257, which is where it was when you started the trade, up to 266 it's showing that you would be up $70 on the trade, which is 50% of the total credit. So that was a, what, a $9 move in the stock's price. Right, so if the stock was up $9, great, you made your 50%. What a lot of people think is, man, I, I'm up 50%, let me try and get the 100%. Well, take a look at what would need to happen. This stock would need to go up another 30 plus dollars to make the rest of the credit. So you make the first 50%, if the stock goes up $9, it would take $30 more for you to make the rest, which is why we're saying don't be greedy. If you hit that 50%, take the profits and you could move on to another trade. So to recap, the key takeaway is to take profits at between 25 and 50%, and on these credit spreads, we're gonna do 50%. 
is when we do a trade called an iron condor, we're looking at the 25%, but we're going to take profits at between 25 and 50% of the initial credit that you receive. The second key is to follow your trigger. You don't want to get into a trade and be trading based on emotion. You want to follow rules and you want to be more like a machine when you do this, which means when something triggers, you do something, you react. Just like in a race, the starter pistol goes off and that triggers the runners to run. If you go too early, you could be disqualified. If you go too late, you likely lose. Think of the same thing with your trading. You want to have a trigger and follow that trigger. Let's take a look at the three main types of triggers that you're going to be having when you manage your trades. All right, there's three types of triggers. The first trigger is going to be profits. All right, you're going to have a certain level to take profits. Number two, you're going to have a level that tells you when to mitigate. Another way to say mitigate is adjust the trade. And the third thing you're going to have is a trigger that tells you when to exit the trade because it goes against you. Now, we already talked about number one, and that's going to be between 25 and 50% profits. All right, so when you hit that, that's your trigger to exit the trade. Now, let's talk about the other two. So you've got this stock, and let's do a bullish trade again. And you have your credit spread down here which remember involves selling one option and buying one as insurance. So you're going to have a trigger that says if this stock, which you expect to go up, or at least sideways, but hopefully up, if it starts to come down to a certain level, you're going to get triggered. All right, so think about it you know, halfway between where you started and where this price is. For example, if the stock was trading at 100 and you sold this one down here and this was a 90 just to keep the math simple if it comes down to 95 that's a rough idea well what what happens what do you do well you just add the other side credit spread you just put one over here and why do you do that well it's going to help generate a little bit extra income to minimize losses so that's trigger number one trigger number two is where you're going to mitigate and trigger number three is where you exit and that's if the stock continued to move lower and it hit that, it's called a short strike. It hits that part right there. You exit the trade. And yeah, it might be at a loss, but what you've done by doing the second trigger is you've mitigated some of those losses. You've lessened those losses. But you've got to have triggers to do all these three things. You don't want to be sitting there like a deer in the headlights wondering what to do. To recap the key takeaways from that, is you need to have a trigger to take profits, which was between 25 and 50%. You need to have that trigger to adjust the trade if it starts to go against you, and then have that trigger to exit the trade. Basically have rules in place for all three. The third key principle is don't over adjust. A lot of people feel that they could turn any trade around into a winning trade. So they adjust it over and over again, and if they eventually make it much worse than it started. Now, adjustments can be a good thing, and we just talked about that a moment ago when we were talking about adjusting and mitigating a trade. But too many adjustments, and you could be in trouble. Just like with plastic surgery, let's say. You know, just a little tweak here and there, a little adjustment might be good, but you could definitely take it too far. Let me quickly show you what people do wrong, and then the right way to think about doing it. So a moment ago, we were talking about mitigating a trade, but let's back this up just a little bit. And first, let me tell you a quick story. Years and years ago, I had someone introduce me to credit spreads, just like we're talking about here on the screen, but he didn't show me a great adjustment technique. Basically, when the trade went against me, I'd be like, what do I do? And he would have the mindset of, you know, we can turn this trade around. We could, we're, don't worry about it. We can turn things around. And pretty soon, I was taking a losing trade, and I was doing things like, you know, I had the expiration here, you know, I'd close that and move it out over here, I'd close these, and I'd sell another one down here, but by doing that, I'm doubling down, I'm doing twice as many contracts, doing all this just trying to make back the money that I lost. It was adjustment after adjustment, and many times it ended up being in a worse position. So instead of doing it that way, I learned the right way to do it. Ron Wheeler, 
He's our head options income coach. He taught me how to do it the right way. And he teaches all of our clients how to do it this way. So let me back this up. Typically what you're going to do is between one and maybe two adjustments. The main mindset that you need is to just understand that all you're trying to do is minimize losses on that trade. And we'll talk more about that in the next key principle. So you don't want to over adjust. Like I was saying before, if this trade starts to go against you, your adjustment is going to be putting the other side on to collect some premium to minimize losses. That's adjustment number one. Now, sometimes there's enough room so that if this starts to go further down, you could, you'll take your 50% profit on that one and do another one to try and get a little bit more premium before it hits this line down here. But that's it. What you don't want to have happen is just really going crazy and trying to over adjust things. The main thing is don't have that mindset of trying to turn a losing trade into a winner every time. Just have the mindset of minimizing losses. The key takeaway that we're talking about here is if you need to adjust, just think about adjusting one to maybe two times. But the most important thing is the mindset. Your mindset should not be, I'm going to turn a losing trade into a winner every time. It should be of just minimizing losses. The fourth key goes along with what I was just saying, and that's it's okay to have a loss. As I was saying, a lot of people go into a trade and feel that every trade needs to be a winner. They think, if it's not a winner, I'm a loser. Well, you can't think that way. It's okay to have a loss because you can actually learn a lot from losing trades. Just like a baseball player. The best baseball players out there learn from strikeouts. They learn what they did wrong. They learn tendencies of the pitcher. They, there's a lot they learn from striking out. Just think about it this way. Sometimes a small loss can actually be a win. In fact, we teach to set up the trades to have small losses if they go against you. At the end of the day, you need to be able to say, I did everything I was supposed to. The trade just happened to go against me, but I minimized my losses. And now I'll just close the trade and move on to the next one. No trading system out there has 100% winners. When you're trading income trades like this that we're talking about today, it's probably the closest that you'll come because you'll have between 70 and 90% winning trades. You need to be careful with that though. Sometimes when you have that many winning trades, you could actually go on a streak of winners. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten winners in a row. We talked to some people who went on a streak of like 20 some odd winners in a row. And the reason I say to be careful is because when a loser does pop up, Sometimes you start to think, well, this can't happen. I can't have a loser. I just had 20 wins in a row. And you start to think, well, I can turn this loser into a winner. Don't do that. The key takeaway, even with a 70 to 90% winning trade percentage, you will have some losers in there. The important thing is to take the loss, but keep your losses small and move on. In fact, I mentioned Ron Wheeler a moment ago, our head option income coach. He said that his biggest losses that he ever had were losses that should have been a small loss, but he tried to be cute and turn a loss into a winner, and he over-mitigated. All right, key number five is to stay consistent. You want to be consistent with your trading. Income traders need to shape the trade to maintain consistent results. Just like a factory or an assembly line, they follow a strict process to get consistent results. You as a trader will follow a process to shape the size of your trade and set up the trade so that you get consistent results. And that means your winners will be consistent and your losers will be consistent as far as the size. You don't want to have one trade that has a gain of 500 and then another one that has a gain of 3000 and then a loss of 600 on one trade and then another trade is a loss of 4,000. When it comes to income trading, you've got to stay consistent. Your gains should be around the same amount and your losses should be around the same amount. And those are the two considerations you always need to focus on. Keep your losses consistent and keep your profits consistent. The enemy of any income trader is taking losses that far exceed the average gain. I mean, think about it. 
if you're looking to make a thousand dollars on a trade you can't be taking losses of eight thousand dollars when you do have a loser everything gets set up right from the beginning of the trade you're going to know what your credit is going to be you're going to new, know around what your loss will be everything is set up right from the beginning and when you do this you need to be picking a universal amount for each credit and as a general rule the risk and the credit should be no more than about two percent of your account well let's talk about what that means if your trading account is a hundred thousand well two percent of that is two thousand dollars so anytime you do your income trades you're going to make sure that the credit that you receive and you know the risk that you're taking is no more than 2000. It could be less than that, but let's just use this number, 2000. And if you think back to what we were talking about earlier, that means on each one of those trades, your profit is going to be around $1000 on each one of the trades. And if you do these types of trades the the way that we teach them and you're looking for a $1000 gain, you're typically going to have a loss between when you do have a loser of between 1100 to about 1600 well what does that allow to have happen well let's say you know we're going to average between 70 and 90 percent winning trades and if you think about it let's just say we a lot of times we're over 80 percent but let's just take 80 percent if you have 80 percent that means you win eight times and lose two so if you win eight times, that's a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So basically eight thousand on your winning trades. And if you have two that go against you, even at the upper end of the the spectrum, you know, that'd be sixteen hundred and sixteen hundred. That's thirty two hundred, right? Your net gain, you're still ahead forty eight hundred of income. The way to be successful with these income trades is keep both sides consistent and if there's one big mistake I want you to avoid it's having a mindset of I'll just let this expire either way you if you have a profit and you're thinking oh I'll just let this expire and get the full profit don't think that we talked about that earlier and on the flip side if the trade goes against you don't just think oh, I'll let this expire and suffer max loss that's how you could turn a great income system into something that doesn't work so the big mistake to avoid is thinking I'll just let these trades expire so today we looked at five keys to managing your income trades if you do want more information on how to do this I recommend checking out our options paycheck course we actually have registration open for that right now just go to optionspaycheck.com registration will close very soon for it this course will walk you through step by step how to understand the trades how to find them how to set them up how to manage them how to enter them everything so if you want more information on an option income system go to optionspaycheck.com all the details will be there but i recommend you do it fast because registration will close soon for that course all right well that wraps it up for tonight i wish you the best of luck on your next option income trade and hopefully i'll see you inside the options paycheck course have a great night